Face-to-face -to -face today is focusing on the maintenance of law and order. The state institution whose duty it is to maintain law and order is the Ghana Police Service. There's a new man on top of affairs at the Ghana Police Service. He has been introducing uh, some new policies that we have been seeing over the period. Again, during Christmas, we saw what they did with the deployment of motorbikes and vehicles. We've even seen horses in town with policemen riding them. What is the grand agenda? It's an election year. How is the police planning to police the ballot papers and indeed the voting centers? My guest today is a director of public affairs at the Ghana Police Service, ACP Grace Ansan Akrofi. I'm going to have a conversation with her. My name is Umar Rusanda Amadou. You're welcome to Face to Face. You're welcome. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amado. My guest today uh, is the Director of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service, ACP Grace Ansan Akrofi. You're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you very much, Umaru. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. How it's, are you too? I'm well. It's, things are in some way, but that's economy. It's not police. In police side, I'm fine. I'm Great. Fine. I'm uh, happy to know you are <laughs> fine on the police side. How is side? the new year starting for you? So far, it's been very good. Let's, Let's talk about the festivities that led into the new year. Um, the police, usually you have your own deployment plan. In the past, I used to hear it's called Operation Father Christmas. I don't know how you named this particular operation that just ended, but what did the police do from maybe mid-December to mid-January? What have you been to work as through that? Okay, thank you. As you are aware, every year, towards the Christmas festivities, the police puts together a very comprehensive operation to ensure that everybody in the country is safe and all the celebrations and event centers are policed properly. And so ahead of the Christmas and New Year festivities, the police came up with our operational plan. And one of the key activities we undertook this time round was engagement with various stakeholder and interest groups. So if you would remember, we, would, we met with the event organizers, associations. We met with the OMCs, oil, and market, oil marketing companies. We had engagements with filling station operators. We had engagements with uh, Mobile Money, Momo Association of Ghana, and so many other interest groups. And their focus was to understand their peculiar needs as far as the Christmas season was concerned and how we could police them better. Mm. So these engagements gave us the opportunity to listen to every group and their particular interests and their particular security needs. And we factored all of these into our security planning for the Christmas operations. And I, so I remember the IG going to, I think, Agobloshi and talking to the traders about how safe their shops were, issues about people who burn down the place, all these things. Exactly. Intelligence-led, I'm sure. Definitely intelligence led. We met at Kantamanto rather okay. to listen to their concerns. Do you know the festive season? Accra Central Business Center is very busy. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people trooping in, and whenever people gather like that, criminals also seek to take advantage. So we had a very special intel led operations there where a lot of intelligence were gathered over the period, a lot of information, all of which we factored into our deployment planning and as we speak even the countermanto intelligence operations are still ongoing yes so these are to deal with people who may commit arson right not necessarily arson crime in general during the festive season during the peak of sales at the countermanto and the Accra central areas we have pickpockets we have fraudsters we have people who have come from out of Accra, probably coming to Accra to shop for the first time, unfamiliar with the environment, and we have people scamming them, taking undue advantage of them, and so we make an effort to be in them, put our intelligence teams out, gather as much information as we could so that we can police the people and police them very mm. well. You, usually, and I don't, I think it is a government policy where during the Christmas festivities they open up the 
the streets for hawking. They allow people to put their wares on the pavements and sell. I don't know if that's done in conjunction and agreement with the police or not, but how do you deal with that vis-a-vis -vis the maintenance of order in the marketplace? I want to move, but I simply cannot move because people are selling. Even on the footbridges, people are selling. How do you do, deal with that? So during such seasons, traffic management is one of the key things we pick up because whatever activities are going on in the market centers, traffic is a big deal. Traffic or vehicular traffic and also you have person the years, the number of people that are tripping into these areas and so our traffic management teams work a lot to make sure that people and vehicles can move as expected to reduce congestion whilst we also police and prevent crime as, at the same time. Yeah. I have seen commanders and people who are otherwise based in the office at checkpoints during the Christmas. Walk us through yes. how you deployed. What's the police strength? How many people did you put on the streets during the day? How many did you put during the night and all of that? And what were some of the key operational? So depending on the dynamics as dictated by our intelligence, we are able to determine that this particular time we'll do more day duties or at a later time we'll need more night duties. So based on our numbers, and the needs of the various locations, our operational team set, plan, and then the deployments are done. So if you take, for example, 31st night, we all know that during such a time, most people are out at night, more at night than during the daytime, and so we may reduce the numbers of our personnel during the day so that we can focus a lot more at night. And so if you paid attention during this past Christmas, we had very, varied forms of operational men in town. We had our static operations as well as our patrols. The static comprised uh, our visibility men. We also had snap checkpoints. We have vis visibility patrols, which in this case included vehicular patrols. We also had motorbike patrols. We had foot patrols as well. We also had our horses patrolling as well as our K9 units. Those are the specialized dogs. They were helping our officers to do stop and searches just to make sure that we eliminate as much crime as we could and ensure safety for all persons who step out. So, so what were the areas that you focused on? We've discussed markets. Which other areas were of interest to you to okay. deploy to? So we focused on markets. We focused on major intersections. We also focused in the communities. We engaged churches. We engaged event centers. We also highlighted at filling stations, Forex Bureau, I forgot to mention them, they were one very key group that we met ahead of uh, our deployment planning. With uh, Forex Bureaus, filling stations, Momo centers, virtually wherever they are, people. And also when people have moved out into the towns, that means their homes and the communities may be exposed. And so we had our community patrols as well with our men patrolling the communities to ensure we left out no gaps at all. Two years ago, during the COVID, you had these um, four tired bikes that you were using on the beaches to prevent people from going to the beach when COVID-19 had struck. I didn't see a lot of them, or is it the case that I didn't go to the beach where you deployed them? Talk to us about how so you dealt with the beaches. You didn't go to the beaches. The beaches were one of the, our focus areas. You know that festive season, beach is a big deal in Ghana, and so most people trip there. There are also event places for most event organizers. So you had beach parties and other beach events coming up. The bikes you mentioned are used by our marine police department. And so together with our general regular men on foot and on motorbike, all the beaches were also policed as I expected. Yes. What about the issue of firecrackers? We do know that it's unlawful to have them. At least we are not supposed to even have them. They should not be imported. But people still had what they call knockouts in town. What is the, what's the rule and how did you deal with those issues? So I'm happy you talked about it from the importation point of view, which is way outside of our scope. But for as long as anything comes to our attention, if it's reported, if you are breaking the rule, if it's hurting somebody, definitely the police will intervene as expected. Yes. So did you have to arrest people? Would you say you arrested more people this ended season or you arrested less people? What happened? 
We made a lot of arrests, but I believe we rather prevented a lot more crimes because our presence were heavy all around the place. It led to a serious reduction in crimes. But those that were committed, that came to our attention, a lot of arrests were made. Talking about the business centers, we had a very special intelligence operations at Seco, To Do, La Paz, those places where people snatch phones and pickpockets, and we made a lot of, it was a very exciting operation. We had one at Cantamanto as well, and we made a lot of arrest but as we always say our interest is not arrest our interest is first to prevent and also to educate so that the people who may fall victim to such persons know how to take care of themselves how to look out for themselves how to take their personal security seriously so we do a lot of engagement education about public uh, personal security issues yes. but i still fear to go to tiptoe lane at circle because i worry that i will not go home with my phone please go why can't we have a solution to circle please go have you haven't been in a while go. no i'm afraid i don't want please to go please don't be go and they would testify the patrons that will testify to you the it's amount safe. of work we just go and pass i can them. hold my phone and make a just call go and pass there and give us the feedback i'm sure your listeners but what will if be the happy feedback means listen. i don't have a phone to call <laughs> you, you will have a phone <laughs> so, because it will surprise you who who is there i must say that on the intelligence side we've done a lot of work our intelligence led operation have been one key success factor for us so uh, as intelligence is done, we can give out every information, but you never know who is next to you when you go to tiptoe lane. Maybe okay. the phone seller is a police officer. Maybe the trotro you boarded for, you know, the driver is an officer. You can't tell. We well, are you doing have, you so have people embedded. We are doing so much, I is see. what I can say. So go pass by tiptoe lane and you can give us feedback. Okay, I'm we'll sure do that. I'm sure we'll be happy to hear that. We also noticed something. You unleash motorbikes in the night as if it was a drove of cattle that you had just moved out, and they just go in there. Pee. What is the point? What are they doing? Okay. Because you just see them riding, and I don't, I don't know where are they going, and they are plenty. They are plenty. What strategy was that? Yeah, so, the strategy was to build public confidence in the fact that the police are out there and we are out there for you. We are out there to ensure your safety. And you know at night, just as you were saying, you were afraid to go to Tiptoe Lane. Now you can go because the police have covered the place. It was the same strategy we are deploying throughout the night. So if you meet them in a convoy, it means they have probably just set off. As they go, they stop at their various duty points, mainly bus stops. We're doing a lot of bus stops operation uh, during the Christmas festivities. So the people who stop at bus stops to board a bus at night, at dawn, are market women waking up at dawn to board. There will be no fear of crime or being attacked or somebody stealing from them or anything. So if you met our motorbikes, that was what they were doing. Oh, so they, they don't were... spend the night riding in a, in a convoy? Not at they, all. They deploy... If you met them, they are just probably just setting off. And as they move, Along, reducing. let's say, the Kaswa stretch, mm -hmm. they will just be falling off at their various duty points to continue. If you met them on the Tishi Nungwa stretch, yeah. they will be going like that. And as they move, they will position themselves at their various uh, okay. duty points. So that's what we're doing. And then you also had um, the patrol pickup trucks alongside the motorbikes, or you, you withdrew them pickups and then you only had the, pol the motorbikes. How no, we didn't withdraw. We blended... We brought all our tools together because we know that at Christmas, the challenge is different. You have so many more people in town and we need to ensure that we leave no gap. So there will be no need to redraw and replace. Rather, bring everything out. The motorbikes are on motorbikes. The vehicles are on vehicles. Where vehicles cannot, so some of us live in neighborhoods where a vehicle may not be able to access. However, considering how maneuverable a motorbike can be there also there to ensure that everybody is safe out there. So we had the motorbikes, we also had the vehicular patrols. They serve different purposes, though complementary, all in the interest of ensuring the security of Ghanaians. Why you decided to pull all your resources and put it out there for visibility? Did you not lose out on the administrative work that you do in the offices where you have commanders that you have moved and sent to? to checkpoints, what happens to your office work? Not at all. I want to, the administrative work, the portion of our work that is administrative is very limited. So we have fewer people in the offices. The policing is done where policing is needed. 
So if uh, the people we are policing are out there, we cannot be bottled up in our offices. When there is no such need, when the numbers, like right now, Christmas is over, the festivities have ended, life in our, across the country probably has returned to, if you like, normal. We can also do normal. But when times change, we just need to know that we also need to step up and meet the people where they are. Because, because we have said that we are a year of return country, we are accepting many people from the diaspora. Yeah. Did you have to do anything special for these people who arrive in the country? Is there any special treatment you give them, any deliberate approach that you deployed, or you treated everybody as everybody? I think we work together with the Ghana Tourism Authority. They shared with us their events program for the year, and that informed a lot of our operational planning. This program was shared with our commanders across the country to inform them on also deploying to all these events. And I believe most of these people that returned into the country will be found at one event location or the other. So as adequate policing is provided at such locations, that is not specific to the person that came from abroad and separate from the person that was in Ghana. All of us at the event center get the same kind of protection. How about yes. people who go to events that are crowded because we have a lot of event centers so the independence square people there's a new event center on the spin text road and several other places where people go to often the the claim is that some of the boys who come there are not coming to party like everybody else but they are looking out for people's iphones to snatch i don't know how you, you've told me what you do at tiptoe lane but what about those who have transported tiptoe lane to event centers i don't how know you? whether you received any complaints from any event centers after not from an those... event center but received complaints from people who said their phones were taken okay because we policed all the events most I, I would say virtually all the any event that came to our notice we deployed our men there you don't need permission ensure. invitation no 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 this time uh, if you invited uh, there are times that people will notify you officially that we have this event coming but this christmas we didn't once we know there's an event happening there are people there there will be security needs we are there so we covered everywhere to make sure that everybody was protected so there are places we set up our police mini police station like uh, where the the aquaba village where the singathon mm -hmm. mm -hmm. took Happened. place yes we had a mini police station set up just so that the people will, if there's anything you have any complaints you mm -hmm. don't now have to travel to a police station to go and make a complaint our people were right there we had our motorbikes there we had our foot patrol men there we had vehicle patrols there just to make sure that there's safety generally you talked about traffic in the market centers that's human traffic vehicular traffic what was your approach so, as always, our MTTD personnel were deployed in their numbers to the places that needed them the most. We know the places that are traffic prone during such periods, and for that matter, our MTTD had a very comprehensive deployment led by the Director General MTTD himself. And ahead of that, we also stepped up our police action against rider in discipline operation, which we call Operation Parry, where we actively engage riders, actively engage riders. So if you are found jumping the red light, for example, they are arrested, motorbike impounded, but the emphasis is to educate so that we create a society of self-disciplined road users. And so he led that uh, campaign to educate drivers. We had all the major bus terminals across the country as well to educate drivers, to show them the need to comply by the road traffic regulations so that all of us can commute freely during the festive period. Yes. The bikes that you talk about, so people ride bikes for various reasons. Some are doing it as Okada, which is to carry passengers. Others are doing delivery services. But the information is that when you come to do your operations, you just round up everybody on a motorbike, take them and frustrate their day. When they are doing it, I know that it is unlawful for people to do Okada business. Currently, we don't have it in our law books, but people still do it, and there's a reason they do it. People also use it to carry goods from one place to another in terms of delivery. And yet, when you're doing your arrest, you don't discriminate. You just pick up everybody. 
Is it that it's unlawful to ride a motorbike in town? I'll be surprised for anybody to say we just run up, we just run them up for what? Because before police would arrest you, you should have committed an offence. So in the case of a motor rider, either your motorbike is not licensed, or you yourself as a rider, you are not licensed, or you don't have your number plate, or you don't have proper documentation. In the absence, or you break a traffic regulation, you breach, you jump through the red, or there has to be something that occasions an arrest. Otherwise, um, I'll be surprised for anybody to say that the police just come You out. see your men chasing Okada people trying to take off the How keys. How are you them. able to determine this motorbike rider is an Okada? Well, we know them. When we see them, we know them. Those who patronize them, they know them. Oh, okay. Mm. I I'm you know, good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Not good. But when you see them on the road, you know because there's there's a second helmet at the back. The person is riding; he's alone. It means that second helmet is for a passenger. I'm and surprised then often, you're able to come to. Oh, I'm a I'm a, I'm a street boy, so okay. I know these. Things. Now, often your men at intersections are just looking out to pull out their keys. Sandra, it, how it long results, ago was It results this? in 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 scaffolds. Because I I would I would be surprised. Because in our constant engagements with the riders, in the past probably, but currently, no. There it's has to new. know. There has to be an incident that occasions the arrest or stopping of, of okay. a rider. In the absence of that, I'll be surprised that anybody gets okay. just... You've talked about out. MTTD. They are the ones that wear the white uniform. Um, what is the approach to MTTD? Have you changed their approach on the streets now? or they're still supposed to be doing what they do at the time they do them? Okay, so the MTTD is taxed with the responsibility of ensuring uh, our safety on the road, check motor uh, vehicles, help to conduct traffic in the event where the traffic lights are not working or not working properly. And usually that is what they do. In the past, we used to have them on the road doing what we call motor checks. That is where they'd stop to check whether your vehicle is insured, you have your roadworthy uh, certificates and, and the likes. So over that period, as we reviewed our activities and our strategies towards uh, managing road safety, we realized that where they are needed most is to help manage traffic at peak periods so in the morning usually their duties will start before six that is before traffic forms and then in the evening around three just before four where traffic picks up again so mainly that is where they are needed now and so that is where we use them more. Yes. this is face to face on city tv my name is omar usanda amado my guest acp grace and sam crofi we are talking policing generally when we come back, we'll move on to other issues. Uh, you do know that there are cameras in town at intersections that the police use. We'll talk about that. It's an election year. How are they planning to patrol the election or police the election, starting off with the new Patriotic Party's primaries coming up this weekend? City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363 on Go TV. Access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. You're welcome. This is Face to Face on City TV. My guest, ACP Grace Ansan Akrofi. She's head of uh, or director of public affairs at the Ghana Police Service. We're talking about police deployment in the uh, Christmas season or the um, festive seasons. And then we'll talk about other things ahead of election 2024. We've talked about Accra. We felt gu I'm guilty of not guiding talk about nationally. What has been your national deployment plan uh, for the festive season? Maybe Kumasi, Tamale, Sunyani, Takradi, and all those places. So, in Accra, the same format that was used was applied across the regions, but tailored to suit every region and their peculiar needs. So, all our regional commanders across the country, in all our 25 regional commands, led active stakeholder engagements 
with key stakeholders to listen to them just as was done at the headquarters level, at the Accra regional level. The same was done by our regional commanders across the country, meeting with their interest group, engaging the community, assuring them of police presence, listening to their needs, and these were factored into their operations for the Christmas. During night time, small personnel were deployed to do the same thing, motorbike patrols, snap check duties, visibility patrols, food patrols. In Kumasi, for the first time, we had the mounted squadron, that is our horses, there in Kumasi, doing community patrols, helping people to cross the road, usually young people, and letting them have, get that feeling that the police is actually there for them. In Kumasi, thankfully, after the Christmas operations, uh, His Royal Majesty Otunfo has offered us a place to host the mounted squadron unit there permanently. So people in Kumasi, the horses you saw during the Christmas are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. They are coming to stay and it will, be, it will be the first region outside of Accra that has uh, the mounted squadron unit. We also have the motorbikes all across the regions. Every region had a number of motorbikes patrolling at night and during the day. And you had these operations were led at the command level, regional command levels by the regional commanders themselves. So you have the commanders, regional, divisional, district, and station officers all hitting the street to make sure that we take policing to where the people are. The whole strategic objective is that let's take policing closer to the doorstep of the people. Let people feel that the police are here with us and the police are here for us. And that was achieved across uh, the country. And during the 31st night, our officers moved to churches and to other event places, bars, clubs, and any other places where people had gathered to listen to them, to hear their first assessment of our deployment, whether they made them feel safer. And the feedback was fantastic. I mean, oh, I, I'm so happy to work at night. I'm not afraid because at every dozen interval, I'll meet a police checkpoint or you see the patrol teams. We have people who came up to say, we had patrol teams escort us to our homes and you have your visibility patrol. At least once you see the police lights flashing, it gives you some comfort, some confidence that you are not alone and that the police are there for you. Mm. The policemen on horseback, is it a ceremonial thing or are they actually supposed to fight crime? I'm trying to see what a man on a horse can really do. Can he chase a guy into a street corner or he can chase a guy on a car or on a motorbike? What is the idea behind police on, mot on horses? So policing on horses has been part of our policing approach since the police was a uh, mounted squadron unit was set up. And you, mostly they have been used for ceremonial occasions during parades and such anniversaries, you see them being used. But we are all aware in other jurisdictions like the UK, we use them for community policing activities. And so these are trained police officers. They are not just horse riders. The policemen you see mounting those horses are trained like any other police officer. That means that they can perform policing duties just as any other person can. So where there are no ceremonies, are they just supposed to be? I don't know. They can be put to other users. And one of them we started before the Christmas was the community patrols. So the mere presence of a police officer on a motorbike mainly helping school children that was the duties they started with helping school children to cross to cross the road where there are no mttd officers very effective and also different police officers can perform different roles uh, duties that is why we complement each other's efforts so the policeman on the horse may not be able to pursue a criminal the way a motorbike or probably a vehicle would do, but they can perform other duties that would also complement and ensure that crime is prevented and also ensure that that assurance of policing, that assurance of safety. So if I'm a school child after school about to cross the road and I get to the roadside and I meet a police officer on a horse that can stop the vehicles and just escort me through it gives a lot of assurance to such young people that the police are indeed mm -hmm. here for us. And in the event of an incident that is beyond them, they are always able to call for reinforcement for the other people to come and What about the police them. with dogs, the canine? To detect weapons and explosives. And so we use them in our crime fighting efforts. 
the, if you get to any snap checkpoint where we have the dogs, they are able to sniff per their training and they can detect if a weapon is there or drugs and also explosives. So these are the three areas that our dogs and their handlers have both been trained to do so. So whenever we do these checks in places where there's crowd and they just walk through with their handlers, if they spot something, they sense it, they remain there and their handlers know how to. So they are one of our key elements now in our crime fights and uh, mm -hmm. efforts. Yes. Let's talk about checkpoints. Um, we know there are regular checkpoints where everybody knows that there's a police checkpoint at this community or at this junction. So for instance, there's one at my village junction, Australia Junction. We all know that. However, when police people move from a car with a pickup, which they hide in the bush, mm. in, a, in a corner, and then they just emerge and stop you. What is the idea? And we'll talk about extortion, but first of all, do you sanction that police people should go with their vehicles, hide it in a corner and be stopping people? Is that part of the approach? How a police vehicle can be hidden <laughs> because once a police vehicle is branded and standing that is visible enough so to describe it as hidden i don't know about that but policing functions like i mentioned all of us are trained in the same way except our you go for further specialized training to fight crime generally so the vehicle that you may be referring to whether it's a sanctioned operation or not i'm unable to sit here and tell but usually if you see a we have a situation where people say a hey, police for the police officers who were in black stopped us mm -hmm. that we know that to stop a vehicle has to be MTTD, MTTD in white it is it doesn't work like true. that that is not the okay. case so if a police officer is sanctioned if sometimes they are acting on some information if we have intel of some robbery activity we have details of vehicles we may be pursuing a police team a patrol team may when the need arises stop a vehicle and conduct a search it may not be your regular checkpoints that you know but for as long as they do their duty lawfully it's 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 as permitted. What about the extortion? I must say that there's a video that's trending where a lady, I think she's from the Netherlands, decided to ride on a motorbike from Ghana through to Nigeria. And in Ghana, she was not extorted by Ghana's police or Ghana's immigration service. When she went to Nigeria, they extorted and then those officers were fired, which is commendable. But it does not mean that generally we still don't have people who extort money from motorists. How do you deal with that particular part? Because it's an, a huge issue and a blot on the image of the police service. Over the period, how have you been dealing with that? I think over time, the police service has always made it clear that we are determined to be a first-class policing institution. Currently, our vision is that we become the best institution in Ghana and a reference point for Africa and beyond. And to do this, we know that we need to win back the trust, confidence, respect of people so that we can deepen our legitimacy by so doing. And so the police administration has takes issues of professional conduct very seriously and professional misconduct for that matter. So we have our Police Professional Standards Bureau, formerly PIPS, set up to investigate and advise management on any issues of police misconduct. I believe I can confidently say the police service is one of the institutions that have never shied away from the challenges we have. We've confronted it upfront, and oftentimes you will see we issue statements on one officer who has been interdicted or the other to show that we are not condoning any acts of professional misconduct and so we keep at it. We also engage our officers regularly in all our training sessions. And anybody that has any complaint about any police officer, as far as their professional conduct is concerned, please go to the public, sorry, the Police Professional Standards Bureau, PPSB. The officers are NEMA. The officers are there. They will listen to you. They will investigate if there's anything uh, that is established against the officer, the necessary sanctions would always mm. apply. Yeah. Let's talk about crime fighting now, uh, robberies. Um, people going to attack forex bureaus, people going to attack Momo joint, people going to attack bullion vans. What has been the approach to dealing with that crime as a service? How have you been dealing with that? I 
I would say that a lot of work has gone into this. When the current administration, led by uh, Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Ekufu Dampari, and his current management board members took over uh, the affairs of the service, one of the areas that they knew required tackling was fighting, crime fighting, especially violent crimes, in this case, robbery. And so special teams were set up to what previously were robbery-prone uh, robbery areas to ensure that they put in place operations there to check or control such crimes. Also, we've done a lot of intelligence work, a lot of intelligence work. So our intel teams across the country continue to work and get information on criminal gangs, criminal networks, and we move on them as and when uh, necessary. And you would also know that if you've paid attention to most of our releases, when there is any robbery, our response, our determination to go after the suspects and make sure they are arrested. And we've been very successful in so many of these instances. So we are leaving no stones unturned. And we also keep engaging, like the Forest Bureau, they're one of the key people we engage ahead of the Christmas season because that was peak season. Monies were going to be changing hands. And so a lot of attention was going to go on them. So we met with them, we educated them on how they, the processes they themselves need to put in place and the layer where police will come in to support them. We meet the Momo Association, the Mobile Money Operators Association. We've met them severally to also educate them so that collectively as a country, we take part our personal security bit seriously. And then the police comes as a second layer, additional layer of security to ensure that everybody is safe. So a lot of work is being done operationally on the intelligence front and also as far as arrest and prosecutions are concerned. We've tackled it from all fronts. The last time we saw an attack on a bullion van, um, a CCTV footage emerged. Now, I don't know if that CCTV footage from the company or it was one of those cameras you have at intersections. Talk to us about those cameras, the one with the white poles. Are they for you? Because I've seen them in all nooks and crannies of this country. What do you do with them? Are they working or they are just toy machines standing there? They are working and they are not owned by police, but we do have access. We manage them from our surveillance center where we have officers on 24 hour duty monitoring. So if anything- Every camera? Every camera. Okay. Yes, every camera. So wherever then, I see a camera, someone is looking at yes, me. Yes, yes. Maybe after here, we can take a walk there and see mm. what they do there. Mm. And when there is an incident, what they do is that we have experts there who are able to pull the cameras and determine, let's say we are looking for a suspect that moved on a particular route. They can pull the cameras on the various routes to help us uh, piece together some information or evidence to support our investigation and the particular let me take this opportunity to educate people who have cctv cameras that in the event of any incident instead of circulating the cctv footage they should first share with police to help in our investigation sometimes putting it out there make our investigation efforts difficult because if you are a suspect and you know that the police are looking for you and you are aware there's a footage of you you may put in place some measures, measures to cover your bag, change mm. your identity and the like. So we want to entreat everybody. When you have a CCTV footage, we pray that it's no incident. That is what we do our patrols and snap check to prevent. But in case there's an incident, please share with the police so that we'll use it to uh, help in our investigations rather than putting it out there. People usually do so thinking they are actually helping. So the general public should look mm -hmm. for that. It has a way of also working against the investigations. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about those who are transporting money? What is the rule? Must a police officer always be with them? What's the safety of your own men who sit with those vehicles? Following the incidents uh, in the past, uh, how many years, about three, or three years or so mm -hmm. ago, the police came to some agreement with the uh, money cash in transit organizations as to the modalities that should be put in place to ensure the safe movement of money in the country. The safety of our personnel 
cannot pay mortgage for anything. And so at all times, the administration will prioritize the safety of our personnel. Mind you, we need a police officer safe and alive to ensure that other people are safe. So whatever we need to do to ensure the safety of our officers, we do. Mm. And per the agreements we have with them, there are some vehicles that, a type of vehicles that will have police officers in them. They are those that would not have police officers in them, but other measures will be put in place to ensure that because of the nature of this particular issue, maybe we can talk about them. I see. Yeah. So, but must a policeman always be accompanying those vehicles? Depending on the situation. Depending on the situation. Absolutely. Next question. When people buy the siren and put on their cars and there's traffic and they are driving a V8 that is tinted, should we give them chance to pass? So the rule about the use of siren is the vehicle should be qualified to use a siren. So if you hear a siren behind you, I don't know if there's a way you are able to tell that this vehicle is one of those that qualify or not. Because sometimes you cannot clearly tell it's safer that you let them pass because if you don't, we all create a situation where you create a, a that could put yourself and that road user at risk. But generally, we've done a lot of work as far as the abuse of sirens are concerned. That over the past year, if I'm sure most Ghanaians can testify to the fact that there has been a drastic reduction in V8s and other vehicles that were not entitled to use sirens that were abusing same. A lot of arrests have been made. We've had a lot of uh, convictions at the courts where the courts sometimes have ordered for such persons to remove the sirens installed under the supervision of the police and therefore and also find in accordingly so we we keep educating the public but if you are found on the wrong side of the law we will arrest you we will prosecute you based on the available evidence yes. from my understanding is fire service police service uh, ambulance service the president maybe the speaker the vice president these are the people who are supposed to move a siren and there must be a police bike in front that has a siren, but not siren fitted to a V8. Is it the case that there should be some V8s in town who are allowed to use that siren, even if there's no policeman riding in front of them? Should we give those people way when we see them in traffic? And that is, I will say what I, I, I said early on that. I don't know whether you are always able to tell when you hear a siren from behind you when you are driving. No, if you look in your rear view, you can see whether there's the a policeman or not. Should so I give it away or not? If a police car is coming with a siren on top, there will be no police uh, motor rider in front. But we can see GP. Okay. And we know that it's a so police. So you can see. So I'm happy whenever you can see and you are sure, then you do what you are supposed to do. But when in doubt, it's better to be safe than to be right. So in as much as we keep uh, focusing on this abuse of siren and we'll keep going after people that abuse, so last they are listening, let everybody be cautioned that if you are not authorized to use siren and you do, and the police catches up with you, we would arrest you and take you through the due process of the law, irrespective of you, you say if the police catches you, how about if the citizens catches you? Can citizens oh, catch people? But of people? course, we have citizen arrests. So if is, citizen, is, that, is that a safe thing to do, though? That is, that is a good question. So even in the case of the police, you assess the situation and see whether you are able to do it alone or you need reinforcement. So it's the same caution with the citizens. If it's a situation that you believe you can mobilize and handle, you make arrests, but you are supposed to hand over to the police at the nearest. So if I see someone committing a crime and I can catch the person, I should catch the person. If and bring you can to you. arrest, catch. We well, like catch. Catch, <laughs> catch is nicer. <laughs> catch is we nicer. Catch and bring to so them. So if we can arrest the person, yes, the law permits citizens to arrest and hand over. I like to emphasize that you arrest and hand. Not to beat over. the person. No, no, no. You arrest and hand over to the. What if the person is proving stubborn? Small. Small thing to tame the person. It's not, it's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> this is face, to face on City TV. My name is Maru Sandamadu. My guest is the Director of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service. When we come back, we'll talk about the elections now, how they are preparing for that. Please stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363 on GoTV. 
Access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Yeah, welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. My guest, Director of Public Affairs, Ghana Police Service, ACP, Grace and Sarah Crofi. Let's talk about the elections of 2024. A lot would depend on you. People said 2020 violence and all of that thing. What are your plans? Starting off with the primaries of the MPP coming out this weekend and the general election, and of course, the electioneering campaign. How is the police strategizing? Yeah, so the police, as always, prepares very well for major events such as the general elections. Uh, in the past, we've seen that elections of that nature is not policed by the Ghana Police Service alone. We work in concert with other security services who also contribute their men to deploy to the various polling stations to support police the elections effectively. This year, preparations have long started. Uh, just a couple of months ago, a meeting was held here at the national headquarters, which saw the CDS, the that is the chief of defense, defense staff. staff. We had the electoral commissioner and some of her commissioners attending. We also had heads of the other sister security agencies, the fire service, prisons, immigrations, customs, uh, who have I left out? Yes. Uh, fire, maybe. The fire. Yes, prisons, immigration, immigration customs. Mm -hmm. We have the ambulance service, the NIB, and uh, the Civic Commission on Civic NCC, NCC National Commission of Civic Education. All of them participated because these are all persons that constitute the election security tax force. Okay. And so we had our meeting meeting where everybody was assigned their role. And following from that, that was in preparation towards the district assembly elections. Mm -hmm. So that is another big election across the country. And so all the various personnel from the various services were contributed to support police, to police that operation. And that is like a precursor towards the general elections. Of course, we know the stakes are different, but the preparation is similar. So as always, we've taken from our lessons from previous elections, We've taken engagement of parties concerned very seriously. You could tell from our policing of uh, the two by-elections that Asenov and uh, Kumu, mm -hmm. yes, that we had constant engagement with the, the parties themselves, the people participating, the EC, and all the time we hold that tripartite, police, the party, and the EC. So that all parties sit at the same table, everybody raises their issues, their concerns, and addressed. And then we are able to go out to implement. We've also policed the primaries for all the major political parties. We did the NDC. We've been working with the NPP. They did the orphan constituencies. And they are preparing for the... The places where they have sitting where MPs. they have MPs, yeah. Mm. So that will be coming off soon, mm -hmm. and we are working with them as always. We work with their neck. We sit, we talk, we listen to their concerns. We look at the election guidelines. We educate our men. We brief them on the guidelines. What is expected? What is not allowed? Who is allowed? Where? What are the stopping points? Which? What constitutes an inner perimeter, outer perimeter? For the first time in Asen North and Kumewu, we declared the election zones uh, weapon free zones and we ensured compliance in that regard. So we are preparing vigorously towards the general election. What elections. about demonstrations? Are you going to allow people to demonstrate or you keep going to court and prevent them we from going to demonstrate? We do not disallow. We, are, we don't have any capacity to disallow people from demonstration they demonstration have been is past, uh, so not allowing them to demonstrate. that should be a false accusation i believe because the law is clear on demonstrations if you want to demonstrate what do you do Alex. notify the police it's just a notification notify the police at least five clear days before the uh, special event and when you do the police have to sit with you and determine uh, you in your notification will tell us your proposed routes and destination 
and the number you expect. And the police will sit with you to determine whether that route is suitable. If it is not, the law asks us to notify you to consider changing the route. And if you disagree with us, you have two days within which to let us know that you still want to go by your routes. And when that happens and there's a disagreement, the only people authorized to settle such disagreement is the court. And so we are forced to go to the court. Let me say it's not only the police that can go to court. If the organizers also feel they are not happy with the proposals coming from the police, and they are able to go to court and let the court make a determination. But at all the time, what we seek is that we come to a very suitable agreement. After all, then all the police concern is to ensure that there's public order, public safety, public security, mm -hmm. and there's nothing that breaches that because then that affects everybody. So, so we should trust you this election period to police our, our ballots and def our def everything definitely. properly. We are renting our men. We are working with the other sister agencies. Enough personnel will be deployed okay. ahead of that. You see us, we do a lot of engagements across the country Very so well. that all stakeholders will make their, their well. needs. Heard. We need to move now, but um, when I tune my TV at home, I see police people in uniform on TV, on Ghana police TV, talking to us. You have done something there. So now you can tell us your own story the way you want it to be told. But, and I believe that's one of the key interventions we are seeing under the new police administration. What other key interventions have been ruled out since um, Dr. Dampari took over as IGP? I'm happy you mentioned the police TV. Yes, it is one of our strategic interventions. The purpose is to educate the Ghanaian public on issues of safety and security. So that, like I said early on, if we have a public that is security conscious, that is self-disciplined, it's work to in our collective interest. And in addition to the TV, there are so many other strategic interventions that have been put in place. I'll begin with the creation of eight new police regions. Now bringing our total number of police command to 25. This was very necessary because we realized that the smaller you break the commands, the better and the easier it is to take police in closer to so the people. So you are decentralizing police. Police has always been decentralized, but we have further okay. taken it down mm -hmm. so that the commands are smaller, mm -hmm. more manageable, and then you can get closer to the people better. We also have the setting up of some new police units, such as the cold case units. We set up the missing persons what unit. What is cold case units? Yes. So the cold case unit is a unit that oversees investigations that... Uh, over some time, we haven't made a breakthrough yet. We have experts trained in digging beyond what everybody else sees so that they can bring closure to some of these okay. cases. So usually interest, public interest cases are referred to the cold case units and they pursue when everybody thinks oh, police have stopped in yeah, the cold case is following closely. Okay. We also have the missing, missing persons unit okay. who have been following up on cases of missing persons and we also set up the election security tax force secretariat. This is one unit that has been instrumental in changing the way we police elections throughout the country. In addition to that, we have what we call the original formed police units, the FBUs. We have about 144 bases that were designed so far. We've implemented about 122 of them. Locations across the country where you have a minimum of 30 police officers with motorbikes, vehicles, and weapons. And their job is to patrol the stretches, the highways, and the roads within that jurisdiction, and also engage the members of the community. Whilst we're doing that, we've also introduced a different approach to our policing training, where now we have our officers who come to every, who attend every police training, being taken through swimming, riding, and driving. So everybody that passes out from our police training school should be able to ride a motorbike, drive a vehicle, and swim when the need arises. We've also not left out the welfare of our personnel because we need a motivated force to achieve our mandate. And so we focus a lot on the welfare. We said uh, His Excellency, the President, launched the Police Emergency Medical Fund for us. And what this fund does is that any police officer 
that is injured in the course of duty or that taking ill, no matter the cost of the treatment anywhere in the world that is available, the police administration sponsors us to make sure that we get our officers back. And then so many other mm -hmm. in the front of operations, welfare, training, a lot is being done okay. to ensure that we deliver on our mandate and serve the people of Ghana. We wish you all the best and thank you for doing that. ACP mm -hmm. Grace Ansan Akrofi, Director, Public Affairs, Ghana Police. Thank you for joining us on Face to Face. Thank you so much, Umaru. It has been nice having you. I hope we get to talk some. We will. And my yes. name is Umaru Sandamano. This has been Face to Face on City TV. We'll be back again next week with more. Please stay with us.